morning. I'll ask all the charter members to please stand with me. All charter members. I am indeed honored to be asked to deliver this occasion message. Since we all know why we are gathered here today, I thought I would take a few minutes to speak about the history and how we got here. On January 1994, Reverend Kenneth Samuel, a Travelers Rest Baptist Church, and a group of the deacons sought a new church building to handle its growth. The leaders settled on the property located at 2778 Snapfinger Road in Decatur, Georgia. On May 20th of that year, some 150 members met there for the first service. At the recommendation of Reverend Samuel, the congregation unanimously approved the name New Birth Missionary Baptist Church. New Birth continued to grow as many changes took place. And a part of that change brought on our new pastor, Reverend Eddie Long. He was appointed pastor in 1984, I mean, excuse me, 1987. By 1992, New Birth had grown to over 8,000 members, and soon after that, it was, interested, it was interesting that we were the largest growing church in North America. By the time Bishop Long, who had been consecrated as the third presiding bishop of the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship, celebrated his 10th year in 1997, the congregation had grown to over 18,000 members. By then, it was clear that God had elevated it to a level of ministering that could not accommodate the four walls at 2778 Snapfinger. So on October 17, 1998, the congregation gathered and rejoiced at the official groundbreaking ceremony at our current church here at 6400 Woodrow Road. When the Lord called Bishop Long home, Bishop Stephen Davis, became our pastor, and upon his departure, Dr. Jamal Bryant was named our leader. <laughs> clearly, the church has currently, church, clearly the church current body is especially pleased with the elevation of our membership, our programs, and we are indeed elated to have Pastor Jamal Bryant as our pastor. And as a footnote, uh, I worked at Newburgh for 25 years. And when I retired after 25 years, um, I would occasionally have to take the receptionist for, for, when she took a uh, leave of uh, doing the, the pro, doing the, excuse me. Occasionally I would have to relieve the receptionist at the desk and people would call to find out I had to relocate can you recommend another church like New Birth? And my answer was, there is no other church like New Birth. <laughs> All hearts and mind are clear. Father God in heaven, we come before you right now, Lord. We praise you, we magnify your name, and Lord, we glorify you for not only just waking us up, but Lord, for everything that you do for us. Most of all, Lord, we thank you for your son who died for the remission of your sin, our sins. Father, we thank you for new birth. We thank you for where you have brought us from. Father, we recognize that no weapons no weapons that has formed against us at any time or at any time in the future will prosper against us. We are a strong people. It is not anything that we have done, Lord, but it's because of you. Father, we thank you for our Reverend Kenneth Samuel. We thank you for Bishop Eddie Long. We thank you for Bishop Davis. And Lord, we thank you for the, um, the angel that you have brought us with Dr. Jamal Harrison Bryan. Father, we just thank you and praise you for what he has done and what he is going to do uh, for this congregation, Lord. So we just praise you for that. Father, we recognize um, his birthday. We celebrate it 
and we know that it does matter that he was born. So we just thank you and praise you for that. Father, we just thank you for every family represented here. Father, we just uplift Elder Vanessa Long and the Long family, Lord. Father, we just uh, touch uh, every soul here. Uh, we touch those souls that are going to give their lives to Christ. We just ask, Lord, with the guest speaker, that you just fertile the soil, Lord, so that the seeds planted will germinate a harvest. Father, we love you, we praise you, and we give you all the honor and the glory. In Christ Jesus' name we pray, amen. Good morning, New Birth. This is a special time in our service that we call Pass to Peace. And what we do on Pass to Peace, we go to our neighbors on our, today we're gonna do left, right, back, and front. And we do godly hugs, good godly hugs and pass the peace of God. New Birth, Pass to Peace. a new birth after you have greeted your your neighbor I just want to know did anybody come ready to celebrate Jesus with a praise today okay I got a praise partner right there I wonder did anybody come to celebrate Jesus today oh I can't hear you did anybody come to celebrate Jesus today if you came to celebrate I need some people to run down here to the front and help me celebrate because we got a praise that we got to get out today Come on, put your hands on it, everybody. Come on, come on. Everybody put your hands on it. Clap, 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 clap. Let's go. You may want to tell your neighbor to scoot over just a little bit because we're going to go crazy. Come on. I got to pray. Say it.
this morning. Because I'm about to praise God for that Holy Ghost power. I need all the radical worshipers to make some strength as we celebrate. Y'all ready? Let's go. Send me some of that Go ahead. Can 
you just do me a favor, say neighbor. I know it's a little early in the service. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. I know it's a little early in the service, but I got a good memory. And when I think about it, I praise about it. I don't know who I'm talking to. I said, when I think about it, I praise about it. You got 30 seconds, just go to praise. Hey. He's been too good, you ought to praise. And now, New Birth, your video announcements. We'd like to welcome all our visitors and our online community. Please text NB Welcome to 71441 for updates. Congratulations, New Birth. Happy 35th anniversary. And we'd like to wish Dr. Jamal Harrison Bryant a happy birthday. Your New Birth family loves you. Hey, why don't you join us for our aerobic worship service Sunday, May 26th. Come on out, wear your warm-ups and comfortable clothing, and prepare for a mini workout during our worship service. Oh, yeah. The Nation of Jesus Men's Ministry is hosting a barbecue Sunday, May 26th, after service on church grounds. Bring your appetites. During the months of June, July, and August, we'll be wearing casual wear. High school seniors, listen up. We are now accepting applications for the Brandon T. Coward Scholarship Fund. But listen, the application deadline is May 26th. Visit newbirth.org for more information. We want you to join us for our blood drive Saturday, June 1st, 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. And Sunday, June 2nd, 8 a.m. until 2 p.m. You can register online at redcrossblood.org. Just enter NBMB in the Give Blood, Find a Blood Drive box. It's in the upper right corner. Or call the member care office at 770-696-5090 to register. And that's all for this time, New Birth.
you to do me a favor please would you lift that hand towards heaven lift that hand towards heaven generations before us used to declare father I stretch my hands to thee no other help I know if thou withdraws thy hand from me whither shall I go I want you right where you are with lifted hands just as a sign and an act of surrender and worship. Would you just open up your mouth and just give him everything that you've been dealing with, everything you've been contending with, everything you've been fighting through. Jonathan, come on, just one line. There it is. Thank you. We exalt Come on, everybody. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Come on, lift up your voice. We we exalt thee. Come on, we exalt thee. Come on, one last time, everybody. We, 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 Can we salute him with an applause of thanksgiving? Come on, thank him that he woke you up this morning. Thank him that he clothed you in your right mind. Thank him that you got activity of your limbs. Thank him that you had a roof over your head. Thank him you got clothes on your back. Thank him thank you got Jesus. food on the table. Thank, you, thank him. Bless the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Down through the years, God has been good to us. And on this day, we hallmark and publicly appreciate uh, how God has kept this ministry for 35 years. If you thank God for your church, I need you to give God glory for it. I said, if you give God glory for your church, We're appreciative for those of you that joined last Sunday, last month, last year. Uh, but I want to ask our uh, charter uh, founding members if they would stand, please. Won't you all please stand? We're so honored. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise for all of them. Come on, show your love. Y'all can do better than that. We honor you. We salute you. We celebrate you. Thank you so much for blazing a trail so that we might be able uh, to come through. Uh, has the Lord blessed anybody this week? Has he blessed anybody this week? I want to ask uh, all of our graduates who are here 
you graduated from kindergarten, graduated from eighth grade, uh, trade school, hair school, college, university, PhD. You're the class of 19. Would you stand, please? Class of 19. Come on, give God a big salute for all of them. We salute you and we are excited about your future. You may be seated um, the second uh, uh, Sunday in uh, June or the first Sunday in June is going to be our graduation Sunday uh, where we officially and formally uh, commend you for uh, your achievement and for uh, your sacrifice. Uh, on that day, we're going to be awarding six college scholarships uh, to deserving young people. Come on, give God a, a, a shout of thanksgiving for that. It's so important, so vital, so integral uh, when data gives us the evidence that now student loan debt is higher than credit card debt, uh, that people are going broke trying to get a higher education. Uh, and so New Birth uh, wants to be intentional to be able to invest uh, into the lives and the minds of the, the next generation. Uh, we're going to be formulating here at our church a uh, college schol scholarship fund uh, for the class of 2020. Somebody give God glory for it. So that next year, this time, uh, we're going to be awarding $50,000 in college scholarships. Y'all don't sound like you excited about it. Amen. Amen. I, I grew up in a time where they gave you a $100 check and, and said, God bless you, buy some books. And they had an S at the end of that. Amen. $100, you can't even get through the cafeteria. Uh, but uh, we want to be uh, a meaningful blessing. I, I am uh, absolutely amazed, uh, New Birth, uh, and I want to thank you. Uh, this week, uh, we were able to hallmark that I've been with you now for six months. Uh, and I'm, I'm appreciative uh, to be able to serve and to be able to share uh, over these uh, six months. Come on, give God glory for what he's done. And I was thinking about how God blessed us over these last six months uh, from how it is that we were able to be a blessing to those who were furloughed uh, from the federal government, how we were able to feed 5,000 people uh, over Super Bowl weekend. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Able to spearhead uh, for a capital campaign to save Bennett College. Uh, are y'all excited about it? God just keeps exceeding our expectation. Uh, on one single, single day, we were able to make uh, the largest donation to goodwill by any church uh, in the country. Y'all still ain't excited about it. And I'm believing that this is what God is calling us to do. Uh, it's not just about what we shout on Sunday, but how we serve Monday through Saturday. And the real evidence of uh, your Christianity uh, is how you exercise your faith after the benediction. 92% uh, of Jesus' ministry was outside of the church. Uh, and too many churches stay inside. Uh, but God is using us to go into dark places. How, how many of you believe that that's what God is calling the church to be? To do and to uh, model and exemplify. I, I, I want you to please, would you just reach and take uh, the person's hand, uh, the person next to you, take that hand. Whoever's hand you just held, look at him and tell him, don't hold my hand when I got something in it if you wouldn't hold my hand when I had nothing in it you, you, you got to thank God for people who will love you when you didn't have nothing come on I can't hear anybody you, you, you don't have time for fair weather friends uh, you, you just sang and celebrated shouted and danced that you're going to put it all in his hands and yet you stressed out. Said you're gonna put it all in his hands and you dealing with anxiety attacks and fighting through depression. I, I want us to put up whatever it is that life has in store for the summer. I'm giving it to God in advance. 
Uh, I'm trusting him that he's going to do something for us uh, that eyes have never seen and ears have not heard. How uh, the real mark of an effective church is how would it impact the community if we weren't here? Would our only contribution be on Sunday morning? We made traffic easier by our absence. We want our presence to be of such that the community realizes it would not be able to mobilize if it were not for the heart of New Birth Missionary Baptist Church. If you believe that, would you give God glory for it? Fourth of July weekend, Fourth of July weekend, I need you to come in comfortable clothes. I know many of you are gonna be hiding down at the Essence Festival. And uh, uh, some of you all are going to be at family reunions and others of you uh, are going to be joining our virtual worshipers. Uh, would you help me thank God for the 24,000 who are watching online this morning? Come on, give God some praise for all of them. On 4th of July uh, weekend, uh, we are going to be doing meal prep. Our service is only going to be an hour and 15 minutes. Uh, and then we're going to be using every uh, space of uh, the hallway. Those of you who grew up in church, uh, you know it as the vestibule. Amen. Uh, but in the hallway, uh, we're going to be doing meal prep because on that day, we're going to be preparing 25,000 meals to send to Kenya. C come on, somebody give God a hand clap of praise. 25. Y'all ain't going to shout about that? 25,000 meals, as well as uh, preparing to send uh, medical supplies uh, over to that nation. We're going to be sending a group of missionaries uh, to go serve there in the fall, but we want uh, our name and our sacrifice to go ahead of us. Uh, New Birth is a local church making a global impact. Uh, there's too much oil on our lives just to be local. Uh, if you're a member of New Birth, you should just have a passport in your pocket, just ready for whenever God calls you to go. Uh, the gospel in and of itself is a verb. You cannot be stuck and know your assignment uh, because you never know where God is going to take us. Uh, amazingly, let me show you how strategic God is. God can make your money a missionary. Did, did y'all hear what I just said? I said he can make your money a missionary. He'll send your money where you physically will not be able to go. Uh, and thousands of people are blessed because of the ministry here at New Birth and because of our sacrifice. And I'm believing that God is going to do no less. Your money is on a mission. God is not giving you money just for bills. He's giving you finances so that you can build somebody up. How many of you believe that that's what God is doing for your life? And so when it is that we tithe, we understand that it's much greater than lights and for brick and for mortar, but we're believing that God is assigning every dime, every dollar, every check, every contribution has a mission attached to it. I want you to please secure your tithe in your possession, please. I want you to secure your tithe in your possession, please. Isn't it amazing that uh, since Malachi, there has been no inflation to what God expects. From Malachi chapter 3, he's still looking for 10%. I want you to please get your tithe in your hand. I want you to get your offering in your hand, your sacrifice. I want you to get it in your hand. Pastor, who shouldn't be giving today? If God hadn't done nothing for you, don't give nothing. But I'm telling you, you got to give in accordance to how it is that God has been a blessing to you. You already said God blessed you today. Is that right? I can't hear you. I said, has God blessed you on today? I want you to get that offering in your hand. I want you to get that seed in your hand. God loves what kind of giver? Isn't it amazing? The offering is the only time we don't shout in church. We shout over everything else but the offering. Uh, you ought to be excited that you have something to give. You ought to be excited uh, because how many of you remember when you had nothing? but God enlarged your territory. Some of us still don't have nothing, but God is still blessing you with nothing. Amen. Please get that seed in your hand. Get that sacrifice in your possession. 
Uh, we're moving towards a cashless society. And so if you're giving through Cash App, you can give uh, on our handle, Love, Live, Lead. Uh, you want to give text to give, you're able to do that. Uh, if, in fact, uh, you want to give through uh, the platform of Givelify, uh, we welcome you to do that or even push to pay. Uh, we thank God for those of you who are part of our virtual family. Uh, since Resurrection Sunday, some 600 of you online said that no matter where it is that you live, no matter where you work, no matter where you're studying, that New Birth is your church. I, I want you to please sow into here because I believe the same oil that's here is going to meet you where it is that you are. Now that you have that seed in your possession, would you please lift it above your head? Repeat after me, Lord, thank you for what you did last year, for what you did last month, what you did last week, what you did yesterday. But the seed in my hand is an expectation for what you're going to do before this month is over. Amen. Bless the Lord. Ask that you'll please, please uh, follow the direction of our ushers who are serving amongst you, as is the culture of our church. If you want to sow the seed for yourself, uh, then you're able to do so right at the altar. Our music ministry is going to give us some giving music. I uh, ask that you will please uh, come with the spirit of enthusiasm and zeal, uh, knowing you can't beat God's giving no matter how hard you try.
so well. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. If you wasn't in church in the 80s, you don't know that music. <laughs> Bless the Lord. You may be seated uh, in the presence of the Lord. Uh, next week, uh, let me tell you how crazy the black church is. <laughs> Did y'all know the black church was crazy? I mean, it's crazy. So next Sunday is, uh, uh, we're getting physically fit. We're asking everybody to wear uh, comfortable uh, attire. We're doing aerobics in worship. It's going to be crazy. We want to bring your blood pressure down, your cholesterol down, your waistline down. Amen. And then right after that, we're having a barbecue cookout. I mean, the church is crazy. So, so, uh, Lord, we just, so cheat day is the day after next Sunday. So make sure uh, you support our uh, Nation of Jesus men. Uh, we, we thank you, Nation of Jesus men, uh, for helping us die easy. Thank you, uh, Nation of Jesus men. I, I'm honored, I'm amazed at the grace of God uh, that God would bless us in such a way to be a beacon light uh, in unusual places. Uh, New Birth, would you help me uh, thank God worshiping with us our uh, members of Mosque number 15 from the Nation of Islam. Won't you all please stand? We're honored to have you. Thank you so very much. Come on, show your love. We honor you. Thank you so very much. Thank you so very much. Uh, last night was absolutely monumental, historic. It, it, it was just amazing uh, for our premiere of Sinners Wanted. Uh, filmed by uh, my two little brothers. One of them uh, is here, our brother Jenkins and our executive producer. Won't you all please stand? Come on, we're glad to have you. Come on! Amen. Nothing like seeing our people do well and soar. Uh, and do amazing, magnificent things. Uh, from Memorial Day to Labor Day, uh, we are dressed down for the summer. We dress down for the summer, but it's, uh, it's Jesus dressed down. Now, it's, don't go all the way down, please. I, <laughs> amen. Look in that mirror twice and say, this is still church now. It's still church. Uh, so ask that uh, uh, you'll please Please, please operate with discernment. We got church mothers with blankets ready to throw them. Uh, so ask that you, <laughs> amen. So ask that you will please, uh, please, amen. Put, put a change of clothes in the car if you got to go to a cookout after this. Uh, but Memorial Day to Labor Day uh, is uh, our dress down. If you don't have a new birth uh, t-shirt, we need you to represent need you to represent, uh, please go by uh, our bookstore and it's going to be able uh, to bless you. Uh, Bishop Jackie Gordon, uh, where are you, Bishop? Jackie Gordon, where are you? I don't see her. Oh, she's coming. Okay. You bringing her now. All right. Bishop Jackie Gordon is here uh, from Florida. Would you give God a hand clap of praise from Melbourne, Florida? We're so honored to have you. Uh, if we have any uh, visiting pastors, uh, carriers of the gospel, would you please stand? Any other visiting pastors? Thank you so very much. We're honored to have you. Honored to have you. Honored to have you. Come on, new birth. I, I want you to invite somebody to be a part of what it is that God is doing in this hour and in this moment. How many of you got a friend that's going through? You got a friend uh, that needs God to do something in their life. Uh, I want you to take one moment. I want you to text them. Uh, I want you to update your post on uh, social media. Uh, invite everybody within your sphere of influence to go to newbirth.org. Uh, we're streaming live right now. We want them to be a part of our worship experience because I believe uh, that God is going to release a word in this place that will not end with you, 
but it's going to be a blessing to every person that is connected to you. Give God a hand clap of praise for our music ministry. Are there any Jesus lovers in the building? That was three people. Y'all making me just a little bit nervous. Any Jesus lovers in the house today? I'm going to ask it again. Any Jesus lovers in the building? Can you just lift up your hands, everybody? Can we just love on him for a moment? Come on, everybody, just lift up your worship. Come on, lift up your praise, everybody. Lift up your worship to him. Father, we love you. Somebody ought to just say, Jesus, I love you. Father, we honor your presence this morning. Glory to God. Millions of words can describe the feeling I have down inside. It's hard to contain. So I'll simply say it. So I'll simply I need the whole building just to raise your voice and say it. Jesus. Come on, say it. I love. If you really do love him, why don't you just lift up your hands? And why don't you just sing along in the atmosphere? Come on, catch these lyrics and say it. Millions of words can't describe, say it. Millions of words can describe the feeling I have down inside. Hey, glory to God. It's hard to contain a church. Y'all say it. It's hard to contain. So I've got to release my worship and say it. Everybody raise and say it. Jesus. Come on, say it, church. I love, I love you. Because you first loved me. Let's read it. Because you first loved me. I'm returning my love I'm back to you. Back to where it really belongs. This is my offering. Yeah. This is my There is no 
Come on, clap your hands if you love him. You sound like you got a crush on him. I said, clap your hands if you love him. If you have your Bibles, would you secure them? Stand to your feet. I want to direct your attention to Mark chapter 5. New Testament book of Mark, the fifth chapter. I want to illuminate for your understanding verses 2 through 10. Mark 5, 2 through 10. Once you found it, won't you say, I got it. If you can't find it, say, Lord, help me. Bible study is Tuesday night. Yes. Mark chapter 5, verses 2 through 10. Won't you read silently as I read aloud? When Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an impure spirit came from the tombs to meet him. This man lived in the tombs, and no one could bind him anymore, not even with a chain. For he had often been chained hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to break him. Night and day among the tombs and in the hills, he would cry out and cut himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. He shouted at the top of his voice, what do you want with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? In God's name, don't torture me. For Jesus has said to him, come out of this man, you impure spirit. Then Jesus asked him, what is your name? My name is Legion, he replied, for we are many. And he begged Jesus again and again, don't send me out of the area. You may be seated. Mark 5, verses 2 through 10. I want to look at verse number 9. Then Jesus asked him, what is your name? My name is Legion, he replied, for we are many. I want to preach for a little while this morning using as a subject don't call me out my name. Don't call me out my name. Look at the person beside you. Look him dead in the eye and say, I'm only going to tell you this once. <laughs> yeah, look, look, y'all think I'm playing. Look him in the eye and say, I'm only going to tell you this once now. Don't call me out my name. My dear friends, um, Alex Haley captured America's attention in the 70s when he unleashed the most watched television series in history, Roots, which traced the story of one African-American's family from ancestry to the contemporary. One of the most seminal scenes is when the viewers are escorted back to 1756 when a 15-year-old boy has just completed his rites of passage ritual into manhood and thereby awarded the name Kunta Kente. Soon after, he's going out to the woods to make a drum which is the instrument for communication. When abruptly, slave traders capture him and throw him on a vessel headed to America, 
that slave ship's name was the Lord's Legionnaire. After surviving the Middle Passage, he ends up on a plantation where the owners execute their program to strip him of humanity in order to ensure compliance. They want to rename him Toby. But he refuses to answer, so they tie him to a stake and whip him mercilessly in an attempt to break him. Under blood-curdling screams, he insists on being called Kunta Kente because that represented his manhood, his strength, his honor, his carriage, and his lineage. Finally, unable to withstand the pain, he conceded and resigned to being called Toby. I want you to be aware of the fact that people who call you out of your name are intending to separate you from your potential and want to distance you from your actual calling. Something has happened that our children are being brainwashed without conditioner, that they boast on being the baddest bee because they've never had a real overcoming. You can't purport to be a thug and a gangster and you own no property. Have no businesses and you still live in your mama's house. The irony of this hypocrisy is that the practice has seeped its way into the sanctuary. It's amazing that as the offspring of the oppressed, we have in large measure adopted a colonized Christianity. From our days of Sunday school all the way up to seminary, the three Hebrew boys who served as protégés to Daniel and operated in ethical resistance in their refusal to bow down to the neurotic, despotic leadership of King Nebuchadnezzar and took a militaristic stance were thrown in the fiery furnace. The Bible gives us the insight to know that these three Hebrew boys had superior intellect, disciplined eating habits, and uncompromised convictions. Following the Willie Lynch playbook, they not only stripped them of their culture, their language, but also their names. On their birth certificates, they are Hananiah, which means God is gracious. Michelle, which translates that what God is, is who God is. And Azaziah, which means God has helped. And isn't it amazing that most of us in this room only know them by their slave names. And so we are fostering their own degradation every time we call them Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It goes to show you that you can come through the fire and people still want to see you broken. You can survive some of the greatest atrocities of your life and people want to pigeonhole you for one chapter without really knowing the full table of contents of what you represent. One of the biggest lies that we tell children is that sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt us. Truth be told, name calling is one of the most dangerous types of bullying. 
leaves victims with negative images about who they are and can scorch their identity even into adulthood. Name calling is the diabolical attempt to redefine your genuine God-given intention. 75% of elementary school kids, 65% of high schoolers give testimony to being called names. There are so many people who are in this sanctuary on your pew sitting next to you, if it is not you, who have been weighed down by somebody in the back of the school bus, somebody in the cafeteria, somebody in homeroom, who called you something then that still has tattooed itself on your self-identity now. You haven't been able to shake that they called you fat, called you stupid, called you ugly, called you retarded, called you gay, called you a punk, called you a weirdo. And somehow just that name alone had the strength enough to chip away at your self-esteem. Because all the times that they called you fat, stupid, and ugly, nobody said you were above and not beneath. Nobody told you that you were created to be a lender and not a borrower. Nobody reminded you that you are more than a conqueror, that you are a joint heir, that you are the salt of the earth, that you are a demon chaser, a history maker, and a world changer. And so even now at 43, at 37, at 56, you are trapped in what they called you at 13. Because the name stuck. In Todd Herman's enlightening book entitled The Alter Ego Effect, the power of secret identities. He urges the reader to name your enemy because as soon as you name your enemy, you are giving your enemy an identity. You have to name it so that you are equipped to defeat it. If I say the names the Ku Klux Klan, Darth Vader, Joker, Donald Trump, you can identify You cannot immediately identify it and then there is an emotion attached to it. That is the power of giving it a name. It equips us to address it. Lately, the vernacular of warfare has shifted where we just address everything as the work of the enemy. Long before we were in amazing architectural, uh, um, architectural uh, structures like this one before we found ourselves in phenomenons that we call megachurches. Grandmothers, great-grandmother, aunt, foster mom used to drag us down to storefront churches where they had washboards and tambourines. And they didn't wait for communion Sunday, but the church mothers had on white nurses' shoes and never went to medical school. And some old church mother in the middle of service wasn't a part of liturgical dance and she wasn't waving no flag. She wasn't on the program. Pastor didn't give her any permission. But some old church mother would just cry out loud in the middle of devotions. That's before we had praise and worship. In devotion service. Church mother used to cry out, Satan, we going to tear your kingdom. That grandmother, five foot three, weighing 92 pounds, had a prayer life that was heavier than two tons. And she wasn't afraid of anything or anybody. And she made up in her mind, Satan wasn't going to have her kids. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Satan wasn't going to have her health. 
She didn't have much money, but Satan wasn't going to have her mind. And she was strong enough to be able to call him by name. But this new generation, it's just the enemy is after me. The enemy made me have a bad day. The enemy is attacking my body. No, you ain't fighting no invisible enemy. You are fighting Satan. But I came to tell you the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty under God for the pulling down of strongholds. I can tell some of y'all are really not in the army, and so I ain't got time for no punks in the body. But those of y'all that are not afraid of them, I came to tell that nasty, slimy, no good devil, Satan, we gonna tear your kingdom. Hamasha. I didn't come to play with them. Elbow the person beside you and say, I know you've been in the fight of your life. I know it's been heavy. And you ain't got to scream. You ain't got to holler. I got this. I came to tell Satan and all of his imps, we going to tear your kingdom. <laughs> Be seated, please. Thank you. I feel something getting ready to break. <laughs> If, if, if you ain't too stuck up, ain't too bougie, hallelujah. I, I dare you to just elbow your neighbor and tell him Satan is already defeated. He's... Be seated, I'm coming. I remember a time I remember a time in Mark chapter 5, Jesus is getting out of a boat, and this demon-possessed man came out of the cemetery. He came out of the cemetery, and he's running towards Jesus. Uh, Jesus came to have life, and this man has his mail being sent to the cemetery. He lives there. He is the opposite of Jesus. Jesus came so that we might have left life. And this man only feels comfortable around death. Living in a cemetery. Aren't you sick of attracting your opposite? You got so much life, so much creativity, so much energy, so much zeal, so many dreams, so many ideas, and here comes somebody out the cemetery trying to kill your dream, kill your idea, kill your focus, kill your enthusiasm. He, he, he lives in the cemetery, and, and, and here's how we know he is comfortable with death. He is an agent of self-sabotage. They try to tie him up with chains, and you would think if he broke free of the chain that he would get out the cemetery. He, he would just use the broken chain to cut himself. I, I don't know how you feel about it, but it becomes draining. Have to always support and push people who major in self-sabotage. God gives them an opportunity and an avenue to break free and they do nothing with the opportunity but injure themselves. I'm tired of begging grown-ups to grow up. I'm tired of having to parent people that should be wise by now. 
He keeps doing stuff to injure himself. Got him an interview, still show up late. Give him an opportunity, they still won't seize it. You show them how to get money and they second guess it while they broke. I have expended too much energy on people who don't want to be better and then resent me for wanting better. You are not mad with me. You just hate your own spirit of mediocrity. So please don't have an attitude because I got drive and you sitting in park. Nobody told you to sit there. You got to do something. He sees Jesus from a distance and falls on his knees. Hear this. And start crying out to God, what do you want with me? Jesus, son of the most high God, in God's name, don't torture me. Y'all got to read the text. Nowhere is Jesus having a prayer line. It wasn't no deliverance service. He became uneasy, y'all not going to like it, because of Jesus' presence. Too many of you are staying up at night trying to figure out why these fools don't like you. You ain't done nothing but show up. And when you show up, it exposes the demons inside of them. It ain't you. It's the spirit that's in them. You walk in the room, they looking you up and down, act like you done stole their last five dollars. They upset just cause you look happy, like you don't need nothing. And they don't know it ain't money that gave me this smile. The joy of the Lord is my strength and the strength of the Lord is my joy. This demon-possessed man, he broke the chains off of him, broke it off himself, and kept saying, Master, don't torture me when Jesus wasn't even paying attention to him. Jesus sees this demon-possessed man. I need you all to get the picture. Jesus sees the demon-possessed man running to him. And before he can get to Jesus, Jesus start casting out spirits. <laughs> and says, come out, you impure spirit. I speak over every person who is under the covenant of new birth that God is going to cast out demons before they get to you. <laughs> Whoever is trying to get close to you that got bad intentions, I pray that the Holy Ghost will put a hedge fence of protection around your life. Be seated, I'm coming. Hallelujah. Be seated, I'm coming. Hallelujah. Be seated. I'm coming. Thank you. Be seated, please. 300 of you. I'm coming. Be seated. Thank you. I got to show you this. Be seated. I'm, I'm coming. Hallelujah. Pastor, I'm confused. What you doing? He put a hedge fence, a protection around my life. You, you ought to be shouting that no weapon that is formed against you. I need you to lift up that hand. I want to speak over you what I heard God say. 
I'm letting no liars near you. No manipulators near you. No scam artists near you. No heartbreakers near you. Whoever gets close to you in this season, they gotta get permission from God first. I seal every business deal, every relationship, every encounter has gotta be with somebody filled. Be seated. Only 70 of y'all are going to shout. The rest of y'all don't worry about it. I'm asking God before Memorial Day to show me the demons near me. Show me the folk that are around me that don't have my best interests at heart. Say so. You see that, huh? Hallelujah. Can't get close to me. Be seated, please. They can't get close to you. I said they can't get close to you. You don't know why the relationship didn't work. God, y'all ain't saying nothing to me. You don't know why y'all's time never add up. You, 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 you never know why it is at the last minute, plans always fall apart. He said, you better not get depressed, sad, and frustrated. I saved you from a pretty demon. I, I rescued you from a handsome demon. Said in no uncertain terms. And Jesus asked an incredible, insightful question. Watch what Jesus asked. Jesus asked of this man, what is your name? He asked him, what is your name? What is your name? And he don't even speak. The demons in him start talking. God help me. And says, my name is Legion. For we are many. I got to show you this. Is that Jesus never calls him by that name. Because Jesus needed to check him and let him know, uh, you may think you are many. But I ain't tripping, it's more with me than there are against me. I'm, I'm talking to those of you that know I got angels that are covering me, even. Said, I'm not calling you by that name. And the demons begin to plead. How loud? Because they realize that their time is short that they're getting ready to be evicted. I said, would you do us a favor? Let us stay in the area. That's what they asked. I'm in verse number 10, clause B, new in the national version. Let's stay in the area. King James Version, translate 1611, said, can we stay in this county? Says, now, when I get rid of the demon that is approaching you, not only can it not stay in this area, it can't stay in this county. Why? And I'm telling you, y'all better tear up this church or switch your seat. He said, I got to move that demon so far away that it can't attach itself to anybody you care about. I, I, I got to move him so far away that that demon will never be able to get close. Says so something. Says I got to do something. Be seated for the last time. Yeah. Last time. After that, do whatever you want to do, please. Yeah. 
me some. Um, he said, I was crying out, please. Don't get rid of me. And the thing that messes me up is, um, is this man who's demon-possessed bows down and worships. Yeah. Crying out, don't get rid of me. My problem uh, with some of y'all is you claim to be saved. But we got no evidence of you ever worshiping. God, God help me. If, if a demon can cry out, I'm, I'm trying to figure out why you so cute and why you think you all of that, that you can't get in the face of God to say, Lord, whatever you do, I got to worship him because I, because I know I, I, I got to fight with my own demons. God help me. So I, I got to worship him because that's, it's some brokenness in me that I haven't completely surrendered. I, 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 I got to worship him because when I would do good, evil, y'all still ain't saying I got to worship him because, oh, wretched man that I am, who can deliver me? I got to worship him. And he said, Jamal, tell new birth if they're going to worship me. If they're going to worship me in here. Tell them I'll answer. My arm is not short that I cannot save. My ear is not heavy that I cannot hear. Tell them, worship me. And I'll, and I'll get rid of all of their private demons, their pet demons, their, their secret demons, their intimate demons, their generational demons, their, their low-hanging fruit demons. I'll, I'll kill their shopping demon and their lust demon and their gambling demon and their pornography demon. He said, but if they're going to worship me, he said, Jamal, just tell them, if they're going to worship me, make sure they don't call me out my name. I don't know how y'all feel about it, but I came to worship him. And I'm so thankful that I ain't never going to call him out his name. I hope I'm not the only Levite here. Well, what you going to call him when you fighting your own personal demons? I call him wonderful. What you gonna call him when you about to lose your man? I call him counselor. What you gonna call him when you under the fight of your life? I call him mighty God. What you gonna call him when your whole life is messed up? I call him prince of peace. Y'all still ain't worshiping him. Lily of the valley, bright and morning star, food when I'm hungry, water when I'm thirsty. You still ain't worshiping him. I call him the great I am. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Tiskanu, Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Elohim, El Shaddai, El Eliyar, Jehovah Nisi, my wheel in the middle of a wheel, Mary's little baby, Jesus. I wish somebody would call his name Jesus. 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 There is something. 
Can I just hear you open up your mouth and bless him? Everybody lift up your voice. You are Alpha. You are Alpha. Come on, baby. you just embrace two people around you that you don't know and just tell them the name of the man that died for you please
privilege. It's my privilege. It's my honor, softly. It's my privilege. It's my honor to extend to somebody in this room an opportunity to get connected to that name. You're in this room. I feel you with every fiber of my being. Your spirit is pulling on my spirit. If you're here in this room, and you know you got to get your soul right with Jesus. <clears throat> got to get your heart connected to the master. Wherever it is that you are, you're saying, Pastor, I'm tired of self-sabotage. Tired of entertaining demons. I can no longer not call stuff for what it is. Wherever it is that you are in this room, and you're saying, Pastor, this is the day I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. I ain't playing with the devil today. This is the day I got to get a church home. I need you to come meet me at this altar quick. Come on, clap your hands, new birthday already coming. Wherever you are in this room, come on, clap your hands as they come. Change somebody's life today. Set your people free. Do it only like you can. New birth, come on, give God glory as they come. Jesus, we call you. Jesus, we call you. Listen, softly, very quickly, wherever it is that you are, I know you in this room today. What we find out about those three Hebrew boys in the book of Daniel is here it is. King Nebuchadnezzar only wanted them because they were gifted. He only wanted them because they had superior qualities. Only wanted them because, hear this, he recognized their potential. I'm talking to those of you who have been under undue assault. I need you to come meet me at this altar. I need y'all to shout for this whole family coming. Come on, here they come. Are y'all going to shout about it? Give your life to him. Give your life to Jesus. You can turn your life around. If you want to know, hear me. If you want to know the size of your destiny, look at the size of your attack. Did y'all hear what I just said? If you want to know the size of your destiny, Look at the size of your attack. New birth, here they come. I need y'all to give God glory. If y'all don't shout for this young black father coming, I'm gonna lose my mind. Come on, I need y'all to give God glory. Listen, I need you to help me open the doors of the church. Lord, do y'all see these whole families coming? Come on, y'all ain't shouting good. Listen, very quickly, I want you to pull in for me. Pull in just a little bit. It's 10 other people getting ready to come behind you. And I want to make room for them real quick. Listen to me. The 10 of you that I'm talking to, I need you to move as expeditiously as possible. 
everything that happened in your life was setting you up for this moment. The devil hoped you didn't make it to church today. But you fought through, every, I mean, everything that could have went wrong happened, but you still pressed your way. Here's one, I'm waiting on nine of you. Here's two, I'm waiting on eight of you. Here's three, I'm waiting on seven. Here's four, I'm waiting on six. Here's five, I'm waiting on five. Four, y'all gonna shout, here they come. Three, y'all ain't shouting good. All right, y'all pull in. I got another 10. Waiting on this last 10. Y'all think I'm playing with it. I'm waiting on this last 10 to come. I don't know where you are, but I ain't gonna let the devil win. He done messed up too much of your life. He done sent too many demonic undercover agents to make you lose your focus, lose your joy, lose your zeal, but you didn't lose your promise. Somebody give God glory. Here come one, there's two. I'm waiting on eight more to come. You coming? Come on. There's three, there's four. Here come five. Y'all ain't shouting good. Here come six. Here comes seven, come on. I dare you to give God glory. We give you glory, Jesus. That's eight, that's nine. Here come my other 10. Are y'all gonna shout about it? You give the glory, Jesus. We give the glory, Jesus. All right. Okay. Here come one, here come two. All right, thank you. I'm waiting on this last five. I told you I got crazy faith. I'm telling you, I believe God for it all. I'm, I'm believing God. Y'all better feel your pastor's faith. How many of y'all believe God for five more to come? Come on, let's launch out into the deep. Would you do me a favor? Would you check your row for me? I can't get to them. Would you check your row? Find out if the people on your row, here come one. I'm only waiting on four more. The four of y'all holding up my whole service. I'm waiting on four of you. Come on. Y'all ain't shouting good. There go two. There go three. Here come four. Y'all gonna shout? Five, six, seven. Y'all ain't. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Y'all still ain't praising them. Hey, hey, hey. All right. All right. How y'all feel? You coming? Come on. How many y'all feel right now? All right, I'm with you. I'm giving you a high five in the air. All right, look, uh, these last four. These last four. I, I need you to come as quickly as you can. Please, y'all think I'm playing, but somebody's life is at stake. The devil don't want them at this altar. He don't want them in this church because he knows if they get to this altar, their entire life, is gonna turn around for the better. I'm telling you, I feel that. Here come two teenagers, are y'all gonna shout? Are y'all gonna shout for this woman coming right now? 
Are y'all going to shout for this man coming? I dare you. Come on. They still coming, y'all. Make some noise. They still coming. Y'all see it in every aisle. Y'all ought to give him glory. Stretch your right hand to faith. Stretch your right hand to faith. Bless your soul. Stretch your right hand to faith to them. You better get you some. Look at this mother bringing her children. Y'all gonna shout about it? All right. All right, put your hands down. Just one last person, for real. I gotta go. Just one last person. I'm telling y'all, new birth, when that last person hit that aisle, I need y'all to go cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. I want y'all to tear the club up. Here she go. Come on, give God some glory. Stretch your right hand to faith. Let's try it. If you in here, come on, come on. For real. We got to go eat. Come on. <laughs> Stretch your right hand to faith. Repeat after me. You're in the right place. At the right time. Join in the right church. Put your hands down. I, I know my lines. You telling me what I gave you. Yes. I'm, I'm really trying to move on with everything that's in me. It's one person that's blocking up my whole spirit. I don't, I don't know where you are, but I so bad, I, I so desperately want to see you saved. I mean, real bad. I want, I want to see you living your best life. Can y'all give God some glory? Here they come from the corner pocket. All right, let's try it one more again. Stretch your right hand to faith. Let's go from the top. Everybody, you're in the right place at the right time. Joining the right church, serving only God. And I know that's right. Show you right. If you know I'm right, come on, big ups to the Savior. New birth, they came as friends. They leaving as family. Would you cheer for the next chapter of new birth? Come on. I want to ask all of you, all of you, would you please press your way this way? Uh, we, we believe at our church, you ain't got to be spooky to be spiritual. Amen. So we're not going to make you fall to the ground. We ain't going to pour no olive oil on your head. Uh, we, we, we just need to get your email. Thank you. I uh, ask that you'll go this way. New birth, make some noise for those who have come. I want to challenge your faith. Ask that you'll be seated for just one moment. We're leaving together in five minutes. Ain't no reason to sneak out. We all leaving out boldly in five minutes. Bless the Lord. Look at the person beside you telling me it's just five minutes. Amen. You already late. Amen. Thank you. Come on, clap your hands again. Isn't this an amazing harvest? Amazing. Uh, I, I, I want to ask this original group, when you all first started 35 years ago, how many of you all was it? Huh? 150. 150. That's amazing. Look how far God has brought us. Isn't that amazing? 
I know that this is not uh, a typical church anniversary. Uh, we, we don't have any highlight footage um, and, and no real museum outside uh, because we are a church that refuses to rest on its past, but we're building towards our future. How many of you are excited about the future? I'm believing that God is going to do some great things. 150, some of them who are still here with us had no idea 35 years ago this is what God was going to do. Had no idea that this is what God had in mind. How many of you believe we're going to be even further another 35 from now? I want to celebrate what it is that God has done in the earth and called it new birth. Hallelujah. That everybody has a, another opportunity and press the refresh button. For this, our church anniversary, we didn't do any great buildup or fanfare or takeoff or any special envelopes. Uh, but I, I want to challenge every person, even our dear friends who are watching online. I, I want you to get a seed in your hand of $35, if you can, for our church anniversary. I want you to do that. Get a seed in your hand of $35. Some of you who feel compelled, I want you to do 350 if you're able to do that. You got outlandish faith, do 35 every year you've been here. The only people who are happy right now are those who joined on Easter. Amen. <laughs> I want you to please, I want you to get a gift in your hand. Even if you're giving electronically, I want you to do that. I share with some of our leaders. Uh, on Wednesday night, something is out of order if the pastor behind me has to find a mortgage. Y'all just miss what I just said. I said something is out of order if whoever is the leader God raises up after my season is completed has to deal with the debt that I'm now encountering. It is in the mind of God that every generation has got to do better than the previous generation. How many of you want more for your children than you had for yourself? I vision cast it with some of our key leaders the other night. I told them I want us to be the very first black church in America that has an endowment. Oh, Y'all ain't got that kind of faith. I don't believe that the work of the ministry is for us to live out of an offering plate. Can you imagine my dream is that we just have an offering on the first Sunday every month. And then what we raise the second, third, and fourth Sunday is just completely for outreach. Y'all ain't got that kind of faith. It can't be the intention of God that to do ministry is just to pay utilities. It can't be the mind of God for him to bring us 35 years and the only thing we did was service a debt. Believing that God wants us to make an impact in the earth realm. And we've got to be able to do that. I want you to get that seed in your hand. Some of you gave 35, others of you. I want you to go far and beyond that. I am so grateful uh, for this ministry. I'm sowing a seed of 1,000 on today uh, because I'm just so thankful. I'm thankful. I mean it. Y'all got no idea how happy I am to be your pastor. I'm, I mean, I wake up every day with a smile on my face. People ask me, what is your name? I said, Pastor Newberg. I done dropped them all. I'm just, I'm just a new birth. Thank you. I need you, please. I need you to get that seed in your hand. Our ushers are going to be able to help you. I'm mindful that we didn't give you advance uh, notice of what it is that we're doing on this day. Uh, and so if you need to give electronically, ask that you'll please do that. Uh, love, live, lead, or ask that you'll use uh, give, la file, push to pay, uh, text to give. Use any of those that's on the screen. There's too many of them for me to keep up. Uh, but ask that you will please give it. Lift up that seed above your head, please, even before the ushers uh, get it. I want to speak a blessing over every lifted hand. Over every lifted hand, I pray that God does exceedingly, abundantly, beyond what you can think, dream, hope, or even imagine. What you are making happen at the church house, I pray God does the same for your house. And those of you that believe it, I dare you to give God praise for it right now. All right. Our ushers are going to collect. Come on, ushers, where are you? Help us. 
Thank you. Receive it. We're the Kentucky Fried Chicken Buckets. Thank you. Thank you. Help us. All right. <laughs> Amen. I grew up with them copper offering plates with, that had a pillow in it. Y'all don't remember those. It had a cross in the center. Y'all remember them play? I'm, we got to have throwback offering. Come, I feel you coming, Elder Stokes. Thank you. Yes. Yes, yes ma'am. I, I ask for permission to interrupt for just one moment. Yes. On this day, as we celebrate what God has done for the past 35 years, we're blessing God for where he's brought us from, but we're also blessing God for where we are right now and for where he's taking us. And God has blessed us richly with a pastor after God's own heart. And he's about to celebrate his birthday, and I didn't want this moment to slip by. So I'm sorry, Pastor Brian, but I just had to step over here. And, and New Birth, I need to let you know now, y'all got my back? All right, uh, Elder Waddell and I just had a little powwow, and we just talked for a moment, and Pastor, you're sowing into this offering, but we want to sow into you. Thank you so, so much. we want to take this offering that we're about to sow right now, and we want to sow it into our pastor for his birthday. So I don't know what you put in your envelope, but you might want to double it, because this is going to our pastor to honor him for what he's done over the past six months. And if you're here and you got saved over the past six months, if you're here and you got a job, if you're here and your bill was paid and your mortgage and your rent was paid, paid or you were on furlough and you were blessed if you're here and you have a testimony of what God's done if you were here and you got baptized in the last six months if you're here and you got the word of God preached to you and got you up out of a ditch and put you on your feet and you're walking forward and walking straight I want you to bless God with everything you've got and I want you to bless God today with the seed we're gonna give God praise because God's given us a good pastor he's given us a great pastor and on the 21st of May, he's about to celebrate his birthday. We're going to send him on his birthday in style. Come on, everybody, give like you love your pastor today. Amen? Amen. That's for everybody watching today by live stream, too. And all together, one, two, three, stand on your feet. We're going to say happy birthday to our pastor. Are you ready? Come on, come on. All right, you ready? Come on, we're going to shout it with love. We're going to say happy birthday to you, pastor. I hope I'm not in trouble, but uh, all right. They got my back if I am. All right, one, two, three. Happy birthday, Pastor Brian. We love you. We love you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Pastor Brian. Happy birthday. Thank you. Elder Stokes, interrupt me anytime. Thank you. You have my permission. I'm glad to have uh, one of my spiritual sons, Pastor Ham from Baltimore. Give God a hand clap of praise for him. Glad to have the Baltimore chapter president of the NAACP, Reverend Kobe Little. Give God a hand clap of praise for him. Bless the Lord. Glad to see. Hey, some of my lifelong friends, Chandra Hughes, thank you. Stormy Wellington, Natalie, thank you all for coming. The Jenkins crew, thank you. CJ Blair, your mama and them, Lottie Dottie, everybody. Amen. Thank you. Bless you. Thanks, Newt. Bless the Lord. You proved it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you. Thank you. All right. Everybody is standing. We got a traffic jam on 20. Clear the aisles. Unless you come in this way. Thank you. Hey, sir. Blessings to you. Everybody is standing. Everybody is standing. Thank you so very much. I appreciate you. Oh, thank you. 
bless the Lord. If you're glad you came to new birth today, would you give God some glory? Didn't our choir sing today? I mean, they killing it every week. Our musicians, thank you so very much. Uh, we, we had our premiere yesterday for uh, Sinners Wanted. Uh, it is coming to theaters. Come on, sir, help me. It's coming to theaters the 31st. May 31st, Camp Creek AMC Theater. You can get tickets at sinnerswanted.com. We just want to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, through, this is our way of, of doing it through a movie. We thank Pastor Brian for opening up the doors of this amazing, amazing church. Um, Pastor J Jenkins is my father from First Baptist Church of Glen Arden. He sends his love. We hometown Maryland, but y'all got a great pastor. We lost a man of God, a community activist, a man that was doing so much in the community, but he's blessed here. He's making a difference, and we just thank you for allowing us to come, Pastor. We love you. D.C., Maryland, we love Atlanta, we love Georgia. We love New Birth. So next, uh, May 31st, Camp Creek, SinnersWanted.com. Get your tickets, amen? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> She brought me the whole Erica Badu bag. Thank you. Amen. Everybody is standing, please. Thank you so very much. Uh, please be mindful. Bible study, the last two Tuesdays have been absolutely amazing uh, on prayer and meditation and hearing the voice of God. Ask that you'll be back here on this coming uh, Tuesday. Uh, we left out, we left out uh, our red carpet from last night. Uh, and so uh, on this, the 35th anniversary of the church, those of you uh, that want to take pictures and use it, ask that you'll please utilize it. And then those of you who need an alibi to say you were here last night, uh, ask that you will please go and use it. We praying for your demons. Thank you. <laughs> As we leave this place, but never from God's presence, would you repeat after me? Lift up that hand. Repeat after me. Walk with God and he'll walk with me. Talk with God, and he'll talk with me. Listen to God, and he'll listen to me. Love God, because he first loved me. Lift that hand as high as you see yourself going. Now unto him who's absolutely able to do anything but fail. May God make you sleepless until you help somebody. May God make you restless until you help yourself. May God irritate you until you have enough sense to worship him. And may God bless you until you have to give stuff away. Henceforth, now and forevermore, and the blessed people of God said amen. Your pastor loves you. God bless you.